Hey guys, Soapbox Prepper here. I'm gonna do a quick little video. Um, sorry for the shaky camera work. My tripod's missing in action at the moment. Um, got my AR here in the background for a quick little back, uh, you know, back item or whatever you want to call it. Anyways, got some new stuff on there. Surefire G2 flashlight. Um, dirt coated the whole thing in um, make blow de green. And I also got a new barrel because the first barrel I got from DS Arms had a crooked uh, front gas block. So, uh, um, they gave me a new one for free. But anyways, it's not, it's not, that's not what this video is about. Um, doing a video on a, a project I want to start saving up for. Uh, I'm getting to that age. I kind of want my own, I want my own place. But, uh, but I don't want to buy a house. I, I don't want to live in town. I don't want to live... With the other people, <laughs> I guess that's the way to say it. Uh, so I'm thinking about. I'm starting to say I'm gonna start saving up money for my own uh, homestead. Uh, I've been looking into it and gotten some great ideas, and it just really, I really want some place that I will own and I can have for the rest of my life and I'll live off of and not have to worry about being in constant debt. Um, I think this is the best way to do it. Uh, so. Uh, this is a book I've been reading. Uh, it's called by Melanie Sorrento. Uh, these this couple have a couple YouTube uh, channels. One of them is called Anarchist Kitchen, and the other one's called uh, Tiny House and Land. They're also blogs um, of theirs. Uh, she wrote this book called Buying Land in a Tiny House: How We Saved Twenty Four Thousand Dollars in Eighteen Months, and it's a really good book. It's free. I'll uh, put the link in the description of their channels and of this for this download. Uh, but go, she, uh, she just tells how they, her plans for saving money and how they saved 24 grand in 18 months and all the costs for buying their land and building a house on it. And a great little inside book. Um, it gives you lots of information, stuff to think about. Um, they, uh, they bought a piece of land, four and a half acres. I think it was in, um, I want to say Kentucky or somewhere in the south, south Midwest or whatever, uh, north of Texas there. Maybe it was Oklahoma. I can't remember, but, uh, bought that and, uh, for four to, I can't remember if it was six grand or some, some pretty good affordable price. And, uh, they bought a shed and lived out of, the, lived in the shed, um, on their land and, it only cost them. They, they didn't even. I don't think they even cost them twenty four grand for the whole thing. They did have hookups for the um, power, but uh, they didn't have any running water or septic system or anything. So it was just kind of a nice little. Uh, kind of opened my eyes to what you really need in in life. Uh, so I kind of been designing houses and cabin. I've been wanting for the past couple of months to get you know start to build my own homestead, build my own cabin, but I think I'm just going to go out for like what they did and get a shed. Um, then I could, I could build one and that would probably save me a lot of money in the long run. I have some constructional, constructional skill, but, uh, I was also thinking about doing of, uh, of renting to own a, um, a lofted barn, kind of like that one. That's a, um, they have a, a company near me and builds them. And I could rent to own and get me on the property a lot quicker. But um, because all I'd have to save money up for is uh, a down payment on the shed, and then um, uh, the twenty percent for the land, and then I could start, you know, getting on there and building. Uh, if I did build my own shed, I'd probably use the timber on my land for uh, for timber for the house, and that would take me a lot longer because I have to have it dried and everything. And air drying takes a couple of months. Um, this is kind of what I was thinking. Uh, 16 by 12 lofted shed with a half loft in it. Um, if it was a little longer, I'd probably do a three quarters loft and then put this little bit above the door frame as storage. But uh, I have storage all. I, I When you get these sheds, they're bare bones. They don't have any insulation or anything. So I would have to insulate the floor. There's also a guy in town who uh, built my parents a shed. Who does this for a reasonable price? I think they got a 16 by 12 with a full loft. It's not as high, not a high loft like I want for the bed, but a full loft for only about four grand. I think it was. So I might. That was a couple years back, though, and one number was a lot cheaper. But I might contract him for a shed. 
uh, and I do work help with them, but uh, I would have probably six inch insulate six or four inch uh, you know R twenty one insulation or whatever, and in the floor I'd probably use polyethylene or you know the the rigid insulation, and same with this the loft I'd probably use rigid insulation, um. Maybe not. Maybe he's he's regular. But anyways, uh, the whole thing I wanted to be off the grid. They had they had uh, power, main power, but I'd want mine to be off the grid. So that's another two or two. I think I I calculated it out, and I can get my all my panels and st batteries and charge controller from the local supplier that I, I know people who work with here nearby. And I think it's going to roughly cost about twenty five hundred dollars. Um, but this would be off the grid completely. No, no reliance on uh, on the on other people. This is a self reliant, self living homestead, which I can, you know, live comfortably out of. Uh, main wood stove right here. Um, Seventy five gallon water tank inside for water in the winter time. I live in North Idaho. It gets cold, and I can't have an outside storage for my water. I also have a. One inch PVC inlet from the outside to fill this up, so I wouldn't have to put a hose through the house. I'd already have it hooked up to a ball valve on the outside, and all I got to do is plug a pump in and shoot it up. Uh, propane stove, propane fridge, and a uh, propane uh, backup emergency uh, vented heater. Uh, it's a sixteen by twelve, so it's not. It's like I think it's like with the loft. It's only about less than 300 square feet so uh i wouldn't uh it wouldn't have to take a lot of uh, stuff to heat, to heat this home <laughs> um but yeah this is kind of the design i laid out with the five foot i think it was five foot uh porch on the front i probably put a porch out back for a shower i also had a design here this is for a bigger cabin i made a long time ago this is all the framing and everything but i had a design for a um, outhouse and a uh, shower house I run off a propane, a propane, um, on-demand water heater, and I'd have a wood stove in there too, so I can use it as a sauna, kind of a sauna slash shower house, kind of a propane. And it would all, uh, yeah. So yeah, I thought that was kind of cool, and I have a outhouse there. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go outhouse or composting toilet. I've heard that composting toilets don't smell, but um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't know. Maybe in the winter time. <laughs> but anyways. Uh, so yeah, I was thinking about that, and I, I, the main thing I want my homestead to be, though, is completely off the grid. I'd have to go into town, um, depending on if I got a, a 100 gallon propane tank, or if I got, you know, f five pound propane tanks, and, uh, or 20 pound propane tanks, and, uh, uh, just switched them out, have dual, uh, dual system with the automatic regulator, like on a camper, and this would be, a, this would probably be a small, a small stove and probably like a 10 or 12 cubic foot fridge. So they're not very big. The stove I'd probably pull out of a, I'd probably buy the stove, but the fridge I could probably pull out. I could also pull out of a, you know, an RV or, uh, or something of about that size. Get from a refurbished RV parts store or something. Just kind of a, I don't know. I just kind of, I just want this to happen. <laughs> uh, so yeah. If you guys have any input or any, any good ideas or any good resources for me, um, let me know. Uh, I know Modoc there has got a pretty nice place. <laughs> Modoc, you're probably watching this video. Um, he's got a nice homestead, uh, which I also want to have pigs and chickens and all that stuff. So I'm kind of thinking how that would work off the grid. I know pigs, I'd probably buy them in the springtime and by the end of the, by about fall time, I'd butcher them and, and, uh, uh, and cure them but for chickens i'm not sure how i would deal with them during the winter time with no power like you know, i've known people who have chickens in the winter time like to have those uh, heating lamps and stuff so it'd be kind of a challenge i'm thinking that's not if my chickens don't get by eaten by coyotes and wolves and cougars um and all those great things we have up here but anyways uh so yeah if you guys have any input i'd like to hear it um so yeah, this video is about 10 minutes long now, and uh, I'll sign off. So uh, yeah, check out the links in the description, and uh, have, a nice, have a nice day, guys and gals.